in here. Okay, this is part two of what you do when you get your slopers home and let's get it fitted now. That's what's next. Okay guys, so I hope you saw part one. If you haven't, I'm going to put it in the description box below so that you can click on that link and see that because then this will make more sense to you. And I am on a mission, guys. I'm on a mission to get you to understand the importance of the, of the five-piece sloper set. I sell my five-piece sloper set on my website and that is the front bodice, the back bodice, the back skirt, the front skirt, and the straight sleeve sloper. And if you purchase that, and I still have it at a ridiculously low price, you will get the torso sloper free. So that's what's happening now. And why am I talking about this? Well, because it is one of the most important elements and things in your design room. If you're starting out as a new company or an established company and you want to manufacture. This is using a size 8 dress form. The size 8 dress form is the standard that is usually used in draping or flat patterns to make a garment in about a 4-6 garment. And that way you can grade down and make smaller sizes and make larger sizes and it's also going to fit your fit model, possibly your runway model, you know, give or take. And those sweet spot measurements that I have used over the years is, are, 35, 27, and then 37 for the hip. Those are the sweet spot measurements that I have developed and have seen as tried and true. Why am I talking about this? Well, guys, when I am asked to um, consult with a new company, a startup company, or design house, the first thing I ask is, where is your dress form? Where are your base measurements? And where are your slopers? And if they can't answer that, we start there before I even look at anything else, and that even means design. So I really believe how important this is for you to understand whether you drafted your own sloper set online and you like it, or you did one in school and you're enjoying that one, that is fine. The first part of this video, you know, first part shows you how to actually convert the five-piece sloper set into a paper pattern so that you can then cut and, and sew a muslin trial garment. And so that's what I want you to do, regardless if you use mine or you use one online. Please note that I drape mine, and so it actually works on a body rather than working with numbers and all of that. Nothing against it, but I just feel that this is more realistic to a body when I do it this way. So you now have your muslins. I also do custom slopers, guys, and I have that now on my website. You will see the link below to where I can work with you from a size 2 to about a size 10, 12. I'm doing right now where I can do it even long distance, and it's all on my website so that I can have a specific sloper made if you want a custom one and you want to be the sample size for your, for your company or you are just wanting to make things for yourself, okay? So there we go. All right, so this is my um, size 12 uh, dress form. It was a custom, and I'm using this just to give you an example. And this is my size 8, generally with the good measurements that I have. Keep in mind, if you have a dress form from 1960s, 1980s, 1990s, it really doesn't matter that my sloper set will not fit your dress form. There are too many different uh, manufacturers of dress forms, and there are too many years to keep track of. But these are the sweet spot measurements that I have found for my company and for related companies that I worked for. Okay, let's get started. First, I want to clarify something from the first video because I had a couple of comments that were, I think uh, people were getting a little confused. We are just making a test garment with our sloper set. We are not making a design. So we're trying to just check the fit of it. And in order to check the fit of it, we either have to check it on ourselves, guys, or check it with somebody helping us in the back, or checking it on our dress form. So for this reason only, you can either put the seam allowance in the center front like this, and I want one inch, not just a half an inch, unless you're not going to um, open it that way, or the center back. 
So if that makes sense. So that way you can try it on the front of your own body or have somebody help you with the back or on your back on the dress form. Because we're testing fit, we want it to be a one inch seam allowance. Okay, with that being said, you now have your muslin just like this and we're gonna go ahead and test it on my dress form. All right, I always say when you're actually doing a garment, the very first thing you have to do is establish your apex. The apex on your dress form should have a pin and it should have a cross because you always want to um, go back to that location when you're draping something or designing something to make sure that everything else will fall where it needs to fall from that apex. So there, it also works with your, with your muslins. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this above like that very softly and I'm going to put a pin here where my apex is and I'm going to put it straight there where the apex is on my dress form. I'm going to put it on an angle because that's all I can handle and then I'm going to gently put it on the rest of the body like this. I have the opening on the back because I'm just testing it on my dress form guys. You can have like I said the opening in the front. The first thing that will have to happen is let's say that this is really, really tight or it's hiking up here like this around the neck and you can't get it to drop down. The very first thing you're going to have to do is if that is happening is clip, clip, clip a quarter of an inch all the way around the neckline till you get it to just drop softly on your dress form or on yourself. I just have a quarter of an inch seam allowance on the neckline because that's all you really need. I have a quarter of an inch stitch all the way around so I know where that stitch mark is and where it should be on my dress form itself, if that makes sense. The next thing you need to do is make sure that the shoulders are lining up where your shoulders are on the seam of the dress form itself. And then we're going to get to the back. And I put a one inch um, stitch on the excess of the allowance here on the seam allowance so that I have an actual penny line for me to use, okay? And once you do that, I'm just gonna have, it's hard to do it if I'm right-handed, but I'm gonna start it like this, and you should want to pin the two pieces together like that the best you can. Keep in mind, I have a lot more ease on this one than normal, but generally your slopers when you convert it to muslin is just the body measurements right with a tiny bit of ease it's going to fit almost like a straight jacket guys it's not going to it's not going to be a lot of design room or movement right this is just to get the body with a little bit of ease i'm going to go on that line all the way down i'm going to match up my waist measure waist um, seam lines together i'm going to go ahead and pin that together as well and go all the way down to the hip like that. Once I have that the way it should be, I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to see that I have this where it should be pretty much on the apex, okay? It's, it's a little bit looser here on the, um, on the neckline than it should be, but generally it's where it needs to be. Then you also have to add um, pins on the center front seam line and that you can feel the groove of your dress form where that center front line will be and then you want to put pins just on an angle all the way down to your center line of your dress form like that I'm going to go here from the waist as well and up here and I can feel the groove with it as I'm doing it Okay, like that. All right, the most important thing is the apex. I put mine a little bit lower than normal because I think it's more realistic. So that's where that apex is on my dress form. If it is not there, that is the first and most important thing you need to adjust. Because one of the first measurements I have, and I have all the measurements, on my um, website of where you need to measure in order to get your own proper dress for your own proper sloper made from me. And one of the first things is the apex to apex measurement. 
okay? Or so, and this is would be here to the next one that you have over here. So that measurement is very very important because you can have them. You can be closer together. You can be your bus could be further away. It could be higher up or it could be lower. I have developed this measurement that is tweaked and it's very mid-range where it's not too high and it's not too low and it's not too far and it's not too close. But if you have your dress form and you like your dress form and you like where the apex is, then you're going to have to make those adjustments, guys. You're going to have to then, if, if your apex is over here, you're going to have to make your new X there. That means you're going to have to change where your darts are. And that's fine if that's what you like and that's what you want. Okay? So with that said, I have the center line there. I have it at the waist. You want to make sure that this is... This is going to give you at least an inch extra ease here on the waist, and that is to move and to breathe and for bodies to, you know, inhale and exhale, right? Like a like human. And you also want to check where the end of your sleeve is to make sure your shoulder line is either too long or too short. That's very, very important. You also want to check underneath to make sure that this might be where the arm plate is or just below the arm plate and that how much further down it is from the arm plate that you have room for your arm to move like that. You also want to check that the ease is, is going on properly, that your sleeve is, is falling towards the front like this and not going towards the back like that if there's too much gaps on the front and not the back or vice versa. Then you want to come in the back. You want to check to see if this is smooth here around the top part of the shoulder. You want to check here also, this is, this is um, not a very large start because you have to have the ease in order to move back here and that's what that is. And then you have to check your, your hip darts to make sure that they're, they're covering very nicely over your hips like that. If you have to go more or less, let's say that we have to, you know, we found that this is way, way too big and we want to pull in more or less. That's where you can pull in here, but you don't always want to take it out of, this, of just the back. You want to equal it all around the body of your dress form. So if you feel that you need to take a lot here, you're probably going to have to tweak it on the side seam and not so much on the center back. Also keep in mind that if you want to pin this on a, a curve, like the arch of the back has a, you know, so you're going to pin more here so that you have it for the butt or for the back if you're more rounded on your back and you have, and you want that. This seam on a sloper should always be a straight line. It should not be curved unless you're designing maybe just knitwear and you only want to do the sloper for that knitwear and you want to have that curvature of your back and then it goes in here where the waist is. The sloper is not a design, guys. It is the basis of which all design is made. So you want to keep that as generic as possible and keep that straight there on that line and then curve it out of here as well. These darts should also be straight darts. They should not be curved darts for fit darts. That is all in design, okay? So that's what I'm trying to let you know that it should aesthetically fit smoothly over your dress form like that or over your body so that you can see and tweak what it is. This one is closer to me. So just so you can get a better idea of what's going on, I thought I would just sort of kind of put it on me. And so obviously the, the pinning is going to be in the back and I don't have anybody to help me. But just to give you an idea why you want to pin it you know, in the front, you can pin it on a body like that and then you can also check with the body like that you know where the apex points are where the neckline is hitting you here if this line is centered on your body um, is the waistline hugging pretty much where the waist should be are you able to close it on the straight um, stitching line of that one inch allowance that you gave yourself or do you need more? Are you able to 
um, lift your arm okay with this. I put a, a different sleeve on this. This is my special sleeve. And then, of course, I'm very short-waisted. So I wanted something that was more generic. But you have to make sure that it's hitting you at your waist and the pit of your neck. And that all of this is working where it needs to be. And that this is on your shoulder line where you want it to be. That it's not too far over or not too too uh, short and again like I said you're gonna have to have somebody pin you right but if you don't you're gonna put it on your dress form again you start with the apex you should have an, uh, a pin here as well on your apex and the apex is not where the dart ends the apex is above you always have to have a little bit of room there right so I'm gonna go ahead and put this where the apex is like that Put it on the dress form like that and then go to the back and let it go smooth. I'm going to go ahead and pin it on my inch marking. This was uh, used for a custom fit so that's why I have these other markings on there but I'm going to go ahead and just pin that on there. This was made larger for a custom fit person. Okay, This was not directly for this dress form. And I'm just going to pin it down like that and let it go like this. And then making sure that this is where I want it to be there as well. All right, guys, that's the fit in a nutshell. Just basically getting that thing to fall nicely on your dress form or yourself and know that that's a good basic sloper that you need to make all your new designs and I hope you like this video give it a thumbs up if you do share it subscribe if you haven't subscribed already I'll see you next time thank you bye bye